How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be taking a look at Tenement Number 2. This is written by Jeff Lemire with art by Andrea Sorrentino. It was put out by Image Comics and is part of the Bone Orchard Mythos, which is a line I really do like and I'm always excited for. Basically, the Bone Orchard Mythos is a shared universe designed to create individual spooky stories that stand on their own but share an overall mythology. A really cool idea, and because it is Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino, the same team that did Gideon Falls, you know you're in for something dark and creepy. Uh, in the last issue, we had one of the seven uh, people in the tenement uh, jump off the roof and leave the key to his apartment to a young kid. Well, is the kid going to go in there? If he does, what will he find? And what's going on with all of our other uh, residents here? And we do get some fun checkups. We get to see their characters and how they interact with each other and a little bit of their own stories. But one thing I really do like is we get to see how they interact with each other once things go crazy and something happens in this book and things do go crazy. So that whole bit of a group of survivors who don't really know each other and have to figure out what's going on. Honestly, though, when things go crazy in this book, I'm really wondering what's going to happen for the rest of it because we've already gotten to these highs. And that's actually one thing, what will happen with the rest of it. I looked it up. Uh, this is actually a 10-issue miniseries. A lot of times we're getting four to six, but now we have 10 issues for this one, and I, I really am curious what we're going to do with all that time. I mean, we do have more characters, but we could get a really cool in-depth story out of this, and that really has me excited for the future of this run. Now, one quick thing, with it being 10 issues, though, and me being a physical media nerd, I have the other stuff in these nice hardcovers. I feel like if this is 10 issues, they're going to be tempted to put it out in two trade paperbacks. And you can do those, I don't care. Just make sure that when the whole series is over, all 10 issues are also collected in a nice hardcover. I, I want my formats to match, and I don't want... I don't want this to, to break the cycle, you know, so here's hoping they still do because 10 issues and a nice thick hardcover, that's going to look really good on the shelf with the other ones. Anyway, fingers crossed for that. Uh, but anyway, I do want to talk a little bit more about the story and a little bit more specifics. So I'm going to switch to the close-up camera, show you guys a little bit of the story, a little bit of the art. I won't be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to talk about specifics, show you guys some of it, far from everything. But without further ado, let's go ahead and switch to the close-up camera. All right, here we are inside the castle, taking a closer look at Tenement Number 2. Bringing the cover close to the camera, again, really simple, but striking. Key in the palm of an open hand by a drain with a little fly on it. Uh, anyway, tiny Bone Orchard Mythos logos there, and image logo over there. Tiny number two, pretty much keeping everything minimal to see the spooky imagery. On the back, we once again have a picture of the tower, and 00211, rated M for mature, and 399. Anyway, uh, flip to the opening credits page. Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino, listed as co-creators. Uh, Lemire is the writer, Sorrentino is the artist, and Dave Stewart is the colorist. And yeah, does a pretty good job there. Uh, after that, let's talk a little bit about the story. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to take a moment to analyze a few things and say my piece on a few plot points, but I won't be going too far past the staple, which is essentially the midpoint, and I won't show you every single panel or anything, just taking a moment to take a little bit of a look at the story and the art. Anyway, 
it opens up with some musings about the darkness, which I think this was the guy that killed himself at the end of the last issue. So, yeah, he's dead and still talking. But the kid gets the key that he was sent and a mysterious word, Ussel. Yeah, not sure what that's supposed to be. And I've been like forwards, backwards, thinking about folding the paper or something. Yeah, not entirely sure if that's a code or if that's just a word in a completely extra dimensional language. We get this guy, of course, telling the kid he shouldn't weep for the old man because he was a jerk and up to some crazy stuff. Uh, we check in on a few of the other characters. The drug dealer and the band girl spent the night together after she was upset because of the suicide. And, of course, she wants to pretend like nothing ever happened. We also get, in the big city, the guy with the sick wife is meeting up with his brother, and he says, I'm having trouble, I need to get back on my feet, I need just a little bit of money for now for the medical bills and stuff. And the brother says, why don't you just send the bills to me and I'll pay them directly? And he's like, oh, I, I'd hate for my wife to find out and the humiliation and stuff. That's really what they should have done, though. That should have been like the only option you gave this guy because the brother agrees and says, this is the last time and don't spend it on the tracks. But you know he's going to spend it on the tracks. Don't do that. Just say, send the bills directly and I'll pay for them. That way I know 100% where it's going. But the kid checks in with his mom, and the, he says, I'm worried I'll have to go somewhere. And yeah, again, your kid says stuff like that. Keep an eye on him. But anyway, we get these abstract panels, which I do really like, where we see a bunch of stuff happening at once. And this helps us with a book with so many characters doing these splashes. is a nice little check-in on each and every one of them. And, of course... He's going to the tracks, like I said he would, and this guy's finally getting his nice night's sleep, and the mother is not knowing as the kid is sneaking out, and I won't go too much farther past this point, but when the kid puts the key in the door, the artwork starts to go really crazy, and we get those nice... Andrea Sorrentino, Jeff Lemire, surreal moments that we've seen in Gideon Falls and now we're seeing in the Bone Orchard mythos. And yeah, that apartment is going nuts. And of course, some more stuff happens and some stuff happened that I skip over. But overall, really interesting, definitely building that nice horror story. As I said, a few, a few horror story moments. Mom, I have to go somewhere. Ah turning into a bit of a creepy kid there. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I really am liking it. I like the dark atmosphere, and I showed you just a little bit of that surrealism and extreme page layout that Sorrentino does, but there is much more of that in here. I just didn't want to show you everything. Overall, this is staying strong, and it's actually moving pretty fast. I'm really curious, after the whole apartment going nuts thing what this book like will uh will be set to you know what will be the status quo for the other eight issues and yeah eight issues a longer time this around i'm uh, looking forward to a, a bit bigger of a bone orchard mythos story anyway to everyone who's watched so far thank you for watching to everyone who's liked and subscribed thank you you really are helping the channel out I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my Bone Orchard Mythos playlist where you can see my review for the first two books and the first issue of this series as well. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.